We're looking at a life without kids, really. And it's just such a shame that there's nothing wrong with the fertility of either of us. You can get used to the whole illness side of it, and it's a life-threatening condition, and not being close to not surviving and all that. But it's not just affecting you anymore, it's affecting your family as well. And it's affecting your future. And it makes me angry. This is a film about what happens when someone with HIV tries to have a baby. Andrew Evans is HIV positive. His wife Michelle isn't. She's more of a disabled cripple than I am, I tell you. <laughs> no, you can't say that. <laughs> you probably forget most of the time, don't you? Yeah. I think a lot just... of people do. Andrew never thought he'd be able to have a child safely. But the couple have been given funding by the government for a pioneering technique, <laughs> which means he and Michelle might be able to do just that. For the past nine months, they have allowed us to follow them as they try to start a family. We had a chat about my situation and what it meant with regards to having kids and that there was this new sperm washing process out there. And, you know, we decided that it was worth giving it a shot. The Chelsea and Westminster Hospital in London is one of the few places in the world to offer a procedure called sperm washing. They have the facilities to clean Andrew's sperm of the HIV virus before placing it into Michelle's womb. Sperm washing is to reduce the risk of HIV being passed from sperm to the female partner or, and then to the child. There's no way a man can infect a child. He has to infect the female partner first. So what we've done with sperm washing is to prevent transmission to the uninfected partner. Come in, have a seat. How are you both? Fine, thank you. Right. Having children is a very important part of full life, particularly if you're in a, in a happy relationship. And not to be able to fulfil that dream without putting your partner at risk is, is really, really quite terrible. To know pretty much from the day that you're told that you have this infection, that you've got such a slim chance of having a child, to now have the opportunity just means the world to me. And, you know, that Michelle is willing to go through all of this to help that happen, you know, it's just overwhelming, really. Oh, it means everything, because, you know, I just want Andrew to have that feeling that you get when you first see your newborn child. I just want Andrew to be able to experience that because it's so amazing. Andrew and Michelle were married in May 2007. It was perfect. It was really small. It was just intimate. I wouldn't have done it differently. First of all, I'd just like to ask you to raise all of your glasses, please. Because I would like you to toast my beautiful wife, Michelle. Michelle! The couple had already started to think about having children. And then we thought about it straight away, because we knew it was going to be such a long process. We initially went to see my consultant, and he suggested that instead of going down the sperm washing route, to normally try to conceive. We were so shocked, actually, that a consultant would say to somebody, a couple in our situation, you know, just have sex at the right time of the month and, you know, see how that goes. I think we both sat there and looked at each other and we just couldn't believe that he was suggesting such a thing. And I know Andrew, if he'd infected me, he wouldn't be able to forgive himself, so it was just, just wasn't an option. I don't think we'd ever just consider having unprotected sex. Andrew grew up with HIV, having been infected when he was just a child. When I was five years old, one day, my mum and I would have woken up and either she or I would have injected some HIV contaminated blood into my hand or my arm without realising that we were doing it. I was born a haemophiliac, it's a hereditary condition. What it means is that I'm missing a clotting factor in my blood so my bleeding doesn't stop. I have to take something called factor VIII replacement. I have to inject it into a vein and that replaces what I'm missing in my bloodstream and helps the bleeding to stop. 
in the late 70s and early 80s that replacement factor 8 was taken from human blood and of course HIV and AIDS contaminated quite a lot of the factor 8 supply across the world. It was probably me that infected him. But it doesn't matter because if it was not me it would have been him or somebody at the hospital. So there's no point in laying blame. Andrew was told he had HIV when he was 12. Well Dad and I didn't tell you at first because there didn't seem any point in you being worried and upset about it if you were feeling okay you know. Do you think maybe there was part of it that you really just didn't want to have to go through the process of telling me as well? Oh, I'm almost positive that's one of the reasons yeah. yeah. Well, I, can, I can understand that. I think it's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Andrew and Michelle live in Worcestershire, a couple of hours from London, with Michelle's daughter Evie. I'll never get my robot right. Oh, I think you will. She is like my daughter, but then I remember that I didn't see her growing up from a baby. You know, we met when she was almost three years old. It's important to me to kind of feel a part of everything from the beginning. I think it would be really nice to have a little baby around and to be able to watch them grow up into well, into the kind of person that Evie is now, really. You want mad as a box of frogs. To give the couple the best chance of conceiving, Michelle has to monitor her ovulation. When she is at her most fertile, the couple can head to London for treatment. First thing in the morning, Andrew has to provide a sample of his sperm to be washed. Okay, same procedure in the pots in the hatch or in the bag ones, okay? Okay. Let's just confirm your partner's details are correct. Yep, yeah, they are. Okay, that's for you as well. Thank you. Sperm washing is a phrase which was coined to try and visually represent what we're doing, but it's in fact a simple centrifugation process to separate the sperm into its components. The theory behind sperm washing is that the HIV virus attaches to all the non-sperm cells in the seminal fluid and not actually to the sperm itself. Um, so what we're doing is we're trying to wash um, the sperm free from all the non-sperm cells. I've just put the samples in the centrifuge and they'll be spinning for about 20 minutes. The process, including testing, takes all day. At 4 o'clock, the couple are called back in for Michelle's intrauterine insemination. It's not very really nice, really, so that's the, probably the worst thing about it. Just try and relax as much as possible. It's ironic, really, that I'm the one with the problem, yet Michelle has to go through the most invasive procedure on the day. Hopefully it will just know it was a very wanted child. Yeah. Pregnancy testing 14 days from today. Between now and then, there's nothing the couple can do but wait. Just carry on as normal, but take into consideration that you've had a procedure. OK, but let us know, so good luck. OK. I'm going to go and do a pregnancy test now. I'm doing it a day early because I can't wait to find out the results. So we'll see what it says. It's just the not knowing. You just sort of try and you well try not to, but you, every little sort of twinge or something you have, you think, oh, you know, is that a sign? Right, I'm just going to wait for two minutes now to get the results. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Every little thing that. Michelle had going on with her body, we sort of examined in minute detail. Moment of truth. Okay, you know, you'd built yourself up to the fact that this thing could actually have worked. No. Not pregnant. When the test comes back negative, you're just sort of devastated, really. You've been on such an emotional roller coaster by that point that I think, you know, just the deflation, just it, it's exhausting. Coming up, Andrew and Michelle get another chance to try for a baby. And I'm convinced that this is the way forward. I'm hoping that first time around we'll get pregnant as well.